Hi everyone. Today I will walk you through 10 things you will need to start doing when developing Power Automate flows. Over the past many years, I have made many of these mistakes myself, but learning from them has allowed me to build more effective and efficient workflows. Now I want to share what I have learned so you can avoid the same pitfalls and create better scalable Power Automate flows. So let's dive in. First up, stop hard coding values like emails, URLs or credentials directly in your flows. Hard coding make it difficult to manage when things change. Imagine you hard code your manager's email in a flow and they leave the company. You will have to go back and update it manually. Instead, use environment variables to store values in places like SharePoint list or Dataverse. For example, you could store your manager's email in a SharePoint list and retrieve it dynamically whenever needed. This ensures flexibility and easier maintenance. Second, stop skipping naming conventions. We have all been there, leaving generic names like apply to each two or condition one in our flows. This can become confusing quickly, especially when troubleshooting. Instead, use clear and meaningful names. For instance, instead of apply to each two, rename it to something like loop through invoices. This way you know exactly what the step is doing and it will make debugging and future editing much easier. Third, don't overload your flow with too many actions. If your flow is doing too much, it becomes harder to manage, slower and more prone to errors. For example, if your flow handles approval, notification and logging all in one, split it up. Create child flows for each task. You can have one flow just for approval and another flow for notification. Breaking things down makes them easier to maintain and troubleshoot, especially when you have larger flows. Fourth, don't neglect error handling. If you assume your flow will always work perfectly, you will be in trouble when something goes wrong. For instance, if your flow sends data to an external API, but that API is down, what happens? Your flow fails and no one knows. Always include error handling steps like using config run after. That way, when an API calls fail, you can log the error or send a notification so the issue doesn't go unnoticed. Fifth, stop using infinite loops. Sometimes a flow can accidentally trigger itself and keep running in an endless loop. Let's say you have a flow that triggers when a SharePoint item is updated and in the flow you update that same item. That update will trigger the flow again, leading to an infinite loop. To avoid this, use condition checks or flags that prevent the flow from re-triggering itself unnecessarily. Never ignore permissions. If your flow doesn't have the right permission, it will fail when trying to access services like SharePoint or Outlook. For example, if a flow is meant to update a SharePoint item, but it does not have the right permissions, it won't work. Always ensure that a user account or connection being used by the flow has the correct access. Do not neglect performance. Flows can get bogged down if they are not optimized, especially when dealing with large datasets. For example, if you are processing thousands of rows in Excel, it could take forever to complete. Instead of looping through every item, use filter upfront to minimize the data you are working with. You can also use parallel branches to improve performance and reduce processing time. Avoid triggering your flows too often. Triggering a flow too frequently can result in unnecessary resource consumption and even hitting power automate limits. Let's say your flow triggers every time someone updates a SharePoint list. Instead of triggering for every small change, set up trigger conditions. For example, trigger the flow only when a specific field is updated like a status or run the flow on a schedule for bulk processing. Ninth tip is always test regularly. Don't wait until the flow is fully built to test it. If you only test once it's done, debugging can be a nightmare. For example, if you are building a flow for an approval process, test the approval steps on its own before adding more actions like sending notifications. Regular testing helps you catch issues early and ensure everything works as expected. 
And finally, number 10th tip is stop ignoring documentation. Without proper documentation, flows can become a mystery even to the original developer. Six months after creating a complex flow, you might come back to it and have no idea what it does. To avoid this, add notes to your flow explaining key steps and decisions. This will save you and everyone else working on the flow a lot of time and effort. And there you have it, 10 things to stop doing when developing Power Automate flows. By avoiding these bad habits, you will create more efficient, scalable and maintainable flows. Thank you for watching and happy automating and I will see you in the next video.